Studio run a Shopify store. Are you unhappy with uh, your checkout abandonment rate? Would you like to lower that rate? Well, in that kind of case, this video is perfect for you. This is uh, the long awaited sequel to my most popular video so far. We're going to go over all the old tips and uh, see how to modify them to be even better, as well as add uh, new ones since uh, two years has passed. And I haven't made an update for this in a long time because there wasn't anything new to add, but now there is. Now, everything we are going to discuss in this video, you can do. There are some limitations with Shopify itself. So for example, you cannot add trust seals or credit card logos. You cannot add social proof really, if you are not on Shopify plus, which costs 2K a month, or you can't add countdown timers. You need to do that in app. Uh, progress bars uh, are kind of like hidden, like not really visible. Money guarantee badges information is not something that you can add by default either. So there's a, a lot of limitations to this. And uh, Shopify's checkout is sort of like optimized, but it cannot be optimized for every single store because uh, every store is uh, unique. So you cannot uh, say that the checkout on a furniture store should be similar from a baby clothing store or the same as like in an online candy store. Like those are three completely different businesses. However, we will be trying to and optimizing within these constraints. And by the way, if you haven't uh, yet uh, got to know me, I am Samuel Larson, the founder of Crocorus.com. We help multiple six and seven figure stores optimize their site at uh, any given moment. So let's jump into the screen share and uh, let's uh, make this into a very actionable video. All right, here we are with the screen share. I'm going to share actual Shopify checkouts and talk through the pointers doing that. Now, the first pointer is simply the consistency. And that's why we are starting actually from the shopping cart as opposed to the checkout itself. So color consistency. So once you go to the checkout, does it feel like you are in the same experience? How are the fonts? How are the colors? Does it look like you are on that same thing? Now here, the general rule of thumb is that you'd want people to just uh, click on the same color buttons and that way they will go toward the purchase. So it's simple, like you just color everything the way it used to be on the add to cart on the proceed to checkout button and uh, you're good to go. Just make sure that uh, everything aligns with uh, your store's styling. Point number two, contact information. So this is a little bit dependent on the store as well. So having contact information visible can add trust to the store and help uh, remind the potential customers also like uh, before, during, after the purchase that there is someone available to answer the questions if they were to have them. Now, it's rare that people would uh, call this number and this number can easily be just uh, an answering machine or it can be a virtual assistant taking these calls, trying to close the people into the purchase. So here people will not necessarily be calling you they can call you if they need to, but very few do need to do it and also very few want to do it. So this is um, one thing that you can use, especially with higher price points, because the more trust you can gain from uh, showing the contact information from your potential customers, the better the chance that they will complete the purchase. All right. Number three is also a little bit contextual. So there's uh, no straightforward exact 100% always right answer here when it comes to the express checkout. So the ideal of the express checkout is that uh, you can just uh, click a button and it's uh, closer to the one click uh, checkout that you'd have in uh, Amazon, for example. So it makes uh, the checkout faster and uh, makes it have less friction and enables the users to complete the checkout with uh, less fields. And this uh, should then translate into less checkout abandonment and more conversions if it is properly implemented. So here, typically, the rule of thumb recommendation is to have shop pay and PayPal of these options. If you do present people with too many options, too many choices can equal no choice. So be careful about this potential mistake. Now, you can also see, and if you run all of these, how many people are actually selecting Google Pay, for example. We typically find that it's less than 2%. So there you are sort of uh, making it uh, a little bit more complicated to select for the rest uh, 98%. So there like uh, you can consider if that uh, is worthwhile. 
Amazon Pay more popular in the US. So also something to take into account where are you mainly selling your products. So there, ShopPay has become a lot more popular over the last few months even. So there, it's more and more recommended to have it. The landscape has changed in that way. So there, that's the Express checkout thing. One last thing to say about it. PayPal does have very high fees. So one thing to consider is not showing it initially. So people would be more likely to choose one of the other methods. And this can help you in this way as well. But again, something to test because some people do convert a lot better when PayPal as an option is available and you just have to adjust it with your pricing. Next up, we have one of my favorite features of the Shopify checkout. So we have these little policy links here. I think these are beautifully implemented. So whenever a customer clicks on any of these, they get a nice pop-up where they can read these uh, policies. Now, the place to add this is from settings, and then you have uh, policies. So there, just add uh, these, and you'll be good to go. Now, you may not want to add, uh, for example, the privacy policy or terms of service, depending a little bit on uh, how you have structured your store. Now, you may not need, for example, terms of service. Uh, it can be just complicating things. However, the refund policy, if you have it, you can show it. If you don't have a refund policy, generally don't show it because uh, then you're just making people more aware that uh, there is no refund policy. So you are also kind of like highlighting the fact that uh, you are not going to sort of like guarantee their happiness or these kinds of things. So the most important by far is the shipping policy because some people here will get uh, confused and they don't understand that the shipping things will be happening on the next page. So if you can outline it here before they have to fill all of these fields, and this can be quite a bit of fields, especially on mobile. So that's uh, possibly like a good bit of friction there that uh, you can save yourself from. So something to consider there, and uh, definitely add uh, these uh, to the level where it's useful for your particular situation. All right, there's two more things that we can do on this first page, and then we'll jump into the next one, which is the shipping page. And those two things are settings and languages. So here, let's start from uh, the settings. So you have your uh, checkout here on the Shopify settings section. And here you can uh, select uh, very easily different options that uh, you prefer. Now, customer accounts is the first thing here. You have this already have an account login type of thing. Now, generally, this is uh, a little bit of a useful thing. Like you might choose to do it. You might choose not to do it. The case depends. So if you have a dropshipping store, a lot of like first time orders only, then you can choose to not use accounts. If you have some repeat visitors, let's say you run a food and beverage store, ideally you have a lot of those, then you definitely want to have them as optional. One thing that you'd almost never want to have unless you have a wholesale store is to have them as required because this will then force people into having that causes extra friction and can turn off uh, some people from taking the option. So people like to have the choice here. So generally for most stores, optional accounts are good. However, don't overestimate their power. They are just accounts. It's not like uh, once you saw force people to register that they would become loyal customers just because of that. All right, next up we have the customer contact method. It will give you a little bit of a, a learn more article here if you want to learn more about it. But it's basically if you want to enable phone, so SMS, or just uh, keep things uh, at email. So I would recommend having uh, both phone number and email. As this uh, is also one thing where you can uh, like help with the trust, actually, as opposed to just having email, you can uh, have them on both places. This is uh, one of those cases as well that uh, it kind of depends. So if you have amazing SMS flows already, and uh, it is working in your niche for your demographic, generally works better for younger demographic as opposed to older, then this starts to make more sense to enable the phone number. If you do have an older demographic and you have a lot of focus on your email flows, you know that they are good, they're performing well, then email only might be the best option for you. And there, like um, for the shipping updates, 
generally recommend the SMS or email as an option. And the show a link to download the shop app is uh, highly recommended to be off because uh, this way it's not going to be on the way. So once you have person in the checkout, you just want them to focus on the checkout, not worry about the order too much. And showing uh, too much of these uh, security things and like uh, showing exactly how it's going to be can also make people more concerned about it. So it looks like there is something to be concerned about. Then next we have the customer information. So here generally recommended to require the first and last name. If you only require the last name, it can actually look a little bit weird because like very few checkouts only require the last name. So here require both first and last. Company name generally is best optional. If you have a B2B store, then you can have it as required. So, but generally you'd want to have this optionality to include the company name. Now there are some stores that never have a chance for a B2B order. So for that kind of case, you can choose to not include it. So for example, if you are selling cannabis products, for example, it's very unlikely that the company would buy them. So there's no need to include it. So again, one of those things where you have to do a little bit of thinking yourself and give you the principles here, but generally like you'll have to make a decision on this uh, to see what's the best thing for you. On the address line too, just uh, have it done as optional because uh, this uh, can give uh, people confidence that, okay, like it's going to go to exactly this address. And like they're used to writing it uh, the certain way in these fields. So that also helps. Shipping address, uh, phone number, generally not needed. So they're like, uh, you can uh, use uh, this actually as uh, one of the leverage points to get the phone number later on. And uh, we'll show you in just a couple of minutes how that's going to work. Last couple of things on the settings section. These are highly recommended that uh, you have the shipping address as the billing address by default. So there like people can go and correct it still. However, it uh, automatically inputs the fields. So you don't need to do it uh, twice. As it says here, it can still be edited. So no worries about that. I would recommend not requiring confirmation step. So it's just a, a smoother experience. You have that uh, showing anyway, like which products they are purchasing, etc. And then using the address auto completion as well. So if they have already filled it in to a Shopify store, you will have it automatically filled. So you just need to click on the field and you get some options of previous addresses that you've used in your browser. Actually, it's not only Shopify stores. Then these are more of a backend options. They don't have anything to do with the checkout. Then content for marketing. I recommend uh, to pre-select this option. You might want to talk to your lawyer about this if you are running a bigger store. However, for most uh, smaller stores, shouldn't be an issue. And uh, then definitely email marketing subscription is uh, recommended here. Just to be a little bit on the safe side. There's also a learn more button here. So you can read a lot more about this in case you are so inclined. SMS marketing, enable this if you have SMS marketing and if your target audience is uh, say under 50 or under 40 at least, like uh, then uh, usually works a lot better. Can annoy some of the older audiences where email tends to work better. But the SMS is still hugely underutilized in uh, younger demographics. All right, so that's the settings. If you have uh, followed up with me on this one, just click uh, the save button here and then next we'll look into the checkout languages and uh, see what we can do there. All right, next we're going to look into the languages. But before that, if you haven't already liked the video, do that because it helps the YouTube understand what you like and optimize your feed for you. And also, if you subscribe to the video, your subscription feed will improve as well. So well appreciate it. Let's jump into this one. And we have a couple more optimizations coming after this, which last one is actually my very favorite. So here we are in the store languages section on the settings and we are going to change theme language. So this enables you to edit the English level of your store or English of your store. And there's a couple of, uh, well, three optimizations here. So first of all, we have uh, the payment field here. Now this is a small one, but if you do this, you'll typically find uh, slight improvements on the conversion rate. So here, you have the title field once uh, you search for payment 
on this uh, top bar. And there you can just change that to secure payment. So then this will change and uh, people will see that like, uh, hey, it's a secure payment. Same way I've seen on other stores, not just payment. Next we have the phone number. So we're going to search phone here. And this is the help text that we want to affect here. So there is uh, a phone label field here where you can enter a text called uh, required for shipping confirmation. So here you'll see first like uh, why we use email. The email will be required for order confirmation. But this way people have a reason why you need the email or the phone number rather and both email and phone number. But then in this kind of case, they are more likely to give it out because now it makes sense. You're not getting uh, called or spammed or something like this. Or at least like uh, that's not the only outcome. There is also the shopping, shipping confirmation coming up your way. Then lastly, as hinted uh, before, we also have the email label. So once uh, you are converting, connecting emails here, you can have this email label required for order confirmation. So this way you also have a reason why this is uh, necessary. Now, if there are optional, the phone and the email, you can also edit those uh, optional fields. So something to keep in mind there. All right, so we're done with languages. Those three optimization, you have the secure payment and then the email and phone labels. All right, now we have edited the languages and we have saved that. Next, we are going to go to the next page where people have added their information and now they are continuing to the shipping. Now also on the languages section, if you are offering free shipping for all orders, you can change this from shipping to free shipping, which also helps to get more people to this stage. So that's one additional thing, but for most stores, they'd be better off using an average order value threshold. So free shipping after a certain amount. Now, then we are going to go and uh, call the shipping and delivery part here on this page. And there you can affect the naming of uh, your shipping methods. So if you don't have this uh, connected to the shipping carrier, which could uh, show you real time dates for this, and then this is the best option you have. So this is like uh, one that everyone can use. Now, these people do this uh, fairly well. So they have a couple of things here. It's uh, quite descriptive on what these are. So this is the FedEx standard overnight. And they also tell in brackets, when does it arrive? So next business day. So here people have an easier time selecting these. Now, one thing that is not so great is uh, you have uh, very little difference in these prices. And actually the, there's no real choice here between these two, because you get like this uh, one day earlier. So if you are going to get uh, a faster shipping and pay extra for that, you're going to select this one pretty much every day. And now here, three to seven business days, that's uh, one where weekends are very challenging for this and holidays can combine that as well. So like uh, you have uh, often a little bit of a range here, but in general, it's still better to showcase this, especially as people have got very wary of uh, this order shipping from China and taking forever. So here, free standard domestic shipping, it would be better if it was like, for example, UPS drone shipping, like that kind of thing to outline it better. But two things here, clear method names and in brackets, how long it takes. Also a third tip here, you don't offer more than three methods because then you have a paradox of choice. So a good uh, principle there is uh, offer good, better and best methods as three options. Or alternatively, you can just have the free shipping, which is uh, generally like a, leaving a little bit of profit to the table. We'd love to combine that with like some paid option where you can ultimately even make a little bit of margin. Because uh, it can often just even make pe people feel better about the free shipping and make those people that uh, take the paid option feel like uh, there's a a higher service for them. So these people are not forced to do the free shipping if they want things faster. All right, so those are the main tips here. Now, very important part here as well, once people have gone through the payment is to 
make sure that you still have an opportunity to make a bit more money from them. So there, like, you know exactly what they bought in the first, uh, when they click pay now here. And in uh, all the internet marketing funnels that are very successful, you have upsells. So before the thank you page or on the thank you page, you have additional things that they can purchase. So you have selected, uh, you have secured your initial order. And now you can get uh, additional orders from that person. So here, like, um, so quick picture of uh, adding these uh, options to the thank you page, for example, that uh, you can then purchase. You have the buy now buttons, adds it to your order. Really easy, really smooth. So this is something that like, anyone can use. And uh, there's nothing to lose from that perspective because people have already purchased. So that's one option. Then you have an option to have more dedicated uh, pages. So there, like, uh, you can have these pages uh, in between the thank you page and the checkout. So once they have paid that, they can add to order or decline the offers. So this works really, really well because uh, say they bought one of the, this product, you can offer the same product for a slightly cheaper price and there's still good margin in that one. So a very, very useful tool. There's a lot of these now on the Shopify app store. Just make sure to choose upsell and uh, Shopify checkout and there you'll have a bunch of options so you can just check which one best suits you so that's that that's how you optimize shopify checkouts the ultimate guide hope you enjoyed if you did make sure to subscribe to the channel if you have uh, any questions you can just comment below and uh, make sure to like the video now i have made a similar video for the card page similar video for the collection page similar video from the fraud page these are all on the channel and we're going to link to the card page one down below so you can just watch that next and make sure that you get more of your people to the checkout so you can apply these amazing tips. Hope you're having a good day. Thank you very much for watching. See you on the next one. Cheers.